Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode four of the Yak Chat, where we talk about all things kayaks, all things fishing, all the time. My name is Jay with Bearded Dab Fishing, and I'm glad you're watching with us. We're streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So wherever you're watching, thank you, and I appreciate you guys. And also, happy Easter. So I hope you guys had a great time with the family and uh, able to go to church and celebrate our Savior. Uh, we're also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So if you're listening on demand later on, thank you as well. Uh, really, really excited about today's episode. Um, it's actually something that I've been really excited to, to talk about for a while. Um, we got our, our homie, Darren from Wendell Fishing. He's coming on to talk about becoming a YouTube creator, right? And what all that takes. So as you guys know, obviously I'm super passionate about YouTube. Feel, I feel strongly that anyone can start and grow a successful YouTube channel about literally anything, any hobby, any topic, any passion, as long as you put in the reps, the time, and just a little bit of strategy. So if you know anything about Darren from Wendell Fishing and you've watched anything about kayak fishing and research, you probably have seen him pop up over the last three or four years, man. He's got over 35,000 subscribers and seven and a half million views which is just bonkers i just hit a million views so so seven and a half that's just wild man so he knows a thing or two about growing on youtube of course i got juan orta from cap and hooks he'll be co-hosting with me as usual and brian and lucas are off enjoying spring break so they'll be back around with us on the next show like always this is an interactive show so i want to hear your questions your comments your smart remarks Feel free to be sarcastic and definitely share with us your dad jokes. So at the end of the show, we do a segment called Funny or Crummy, and we'll go through all the dad jokes that are submitted throughout the show. And uh, the good thing about a bad dad joke is that it's still a good dad joke. So really, it's it's win-win. You cannot lose when it comes to a dad joke. So before we bring on Juan and Darren, just a couple real quick housekeeping type things, man. We got kayak fishing dads on facebook if you're not part of the group make sure you head on over there and join us we got over 19,000 members uh all over the world that just love kayak fishing they're ready to share advice ask questions share pictures all that stuff um, and we also have for the first time this year a couple meetups that we're doing for kayak fishing dads we've got south carolina pennsylvania indiana uh, massachusetts and minnesota so Head on over to the Facebook group Kayak Fishing Dads and go over to the events page and you'll see all the events that we have planned. All these um, live meetups are going to be on there. And if you don't see one local to you and you want to host one out your way, uh, feel free to do so. Hit me up and we'll get it set up and put on there on the group. Uh, next up, we have the Knucklehead Bass Fishing Series uh, for 2024. Um, I have all the information for that on the show notes below, so I won't go through all the information this time because I really just want to jump into the uh, the topic here. But Wendell actually won last year's Knucklehead Championship on Gunnersville, and he'll he'll brag about that, I'm sure. But a well deserved win. Um, it's a chance to fish with your favorite uh, YouTubers on their team, and there's a guaranteed ten thousand dollar in payouts for the championship. So not only do you get to fish with some really cool guys that you might know from the internet you get to compete for ten thousand dollars but you also get to fish fish a legendary lake like gunnersville which is really cool uh and it was a great time last time for sure and last thing we have uh is just make sure you guys write it down next show for the yak chat is going to be april 14th we're talking to impulse rods about choosing the right rods so this goes hand in hand with our uh, topic we had a couple weeks ago with Omnia Fishing. We talked about reels with Trevor Lowe. So this is the next one up on the list, right? So you got to choose the right reel. You got to choose the right rod for the best combination. So April 14th, two weeks, we'll be here at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern talking about choosing the right uh, rod for fishing. So without any further ado, let me stop blabbing here, but I want to bring the guys on here. So of course, we got Mr. Juan Orta. How are you guys doing? How's everything? Yo, yo, bro. Thanks. Thanks for coming on, man. And we got the homie. What's up? How's it going, man? What's up, bro? Yo, super happy to have you, man. <laughs> we've we've been planning be this one for a little bit. And uh, and I figured, you know, like it's it's crazy the amount of people that want to talk about starting a YouTube channel. Like it's always 
it's right there, right? Because chances are, if you have a kayak, you have at least a GoPro. Like, and that's always how it generally starts. Right. So there's just more and more interest in kind of getting this thing going on YouTube. No, yeah, it's it's a it's a wild ride. Content creation is is crazy, bro. Uh, a lot of fun. It's kind of like fishing. To be honest with you, it's just for like attention, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, eyeballs and visibility, and um, so it's it's. It, it, and it changes all the time. So you really have to be a constant learner in order to stay on top of the game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. All about the algorithm. And we, we were chatting a little bit before the show started, kind of like when I got started, I didn't know there was any type of like strategy to YouTube. Just started posting, which I guess <laughs> is a good thing, because if I knew that there was so much strategy, I probably would have not. Right. Jumped in. Yeah. I mean. I have my own show as well. And one of the questions I always ask is how did you get into the YouTube deal? And I would say 95% of the time, the responses are, I stumbled into it somehow, some form, some fashion. It wasn't ever, I want to be an influencer, content creator, whatever you want to call it. I hate the word influencer, but they've always stumbled into it from something. It was never meant to be something they do all the time. It was just maybe a place mm -hmm. to host their videos or something they did with their kids or something for family videos. Um, and yeah. then a lot of times I hear the story is like I posted videos like years ago and then I logged back into my YouTube and it had like I had like 5,000 subscribers somehow. And so why not continue to move forward with that? Um, so it, it's it's been crazy here. Individual stories for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's got theirs. And I know uh, Juan's Juan's just getting started in his YouTube journey. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you're more on the on the Instagram side, right? Um. Well, I kind of had Instagram first, and um, I kind of just went for it. I said, "What am I waiting on?" Um. I, I think a lot of times uh, that's kind of people kind of hold back for whatever reason, and uh, you you have to learn. Everything's a learning curve, right? In some sort of aspect. So I said, "I." You know, let me just go for it. Um, what's the worst that's going to happen? Uh, and so, yeah, that. So, um, uh, yeah, I think I'm over 300,000 views now on YouTube, mostly short views. All of them pretty, pretty much are short views, but uh, doing my best to transition into some long form videos and uh, just trying to figure out my angle and uh, what's going to work best for me. So, yeah. Yeah. Word. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about shorts and long form later because. That that's a battle in and of itself. I hate shorts, man. I do. I'm not a fan. <laughs> really? I'll I'll watch. I hate doing them, man. I don't know what it is. I just don't like doing. Like I'll do them here and there, but I just don't like doing shorts. I like to do long form video. Hey, you know what? Well, we'll get into that conversation too. I mean, do what you like, type of thing, right? Um, yep. or you'll burn. You're crashing burn fast. So, for sure, yeah. man. for sure. So so on the off chance that folks here haven't heard about you. Or at least how you started on the on this uh, YouTube journey. Can you share with us when and most importantly why you got started on YouTube? You know, I don't share the story very often, so many may not hear it. Uh, I've shared it a couple times, but I think it's deep in the library somewhere. Sometimes it gets lost. But mm -hmm. it was about a little over three years ago. My oh, my father-in-law passed in the home that we were living. I was out of work for about 10, 10 months. And 60 years old, dies a heart attack. And I started really thinking to myself, um, that was a tough time. And I started thinking to myself, I love fishing. And my girls, I want to teach them. But I might not be around, right? I was having this existential moment in my life. Um, I might not be around to teach them when they want to learn. I would say they want to learn. And I'm just not here anymore. So I was like, you know what? I will... I'll just throw I'll throw some of these videos up on up on YouTube and see what happens. And then I started getting into it, right? I was kind of fun. And of course, I was, I was out of work, so I needed something to do with my hands. And so I started creating these videos. And then, you you know, in order to create videos, you need to have cameras. Keep in mind, then you got to have, you know, editing software. And then you got to have this and you have that. And before you know it, it gets expensive really fast. And so my wife and I started getting into some conversations about how much money I was spending on fishing. So I was mm -hmm. like, all right. Now I know what I need to do. I need to monetize, right? I'm sure we'll talk about that in a bit. And so the next goal was if I can just make enough money to offset the cost of my fishing addiction, that won't be an issue anymore. And then got to that point. And then from there, I just continued to like, well, then you start doing the math. 
okay, maybe in four to five years, I could go and go full time. And then I'm like, then I'm in like drive mode. And when I get into drive mode, I mean, there's nothing in my way. Uh, if I say I'm going to, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something. And so then you start to get into the strategy and then you start getting into learning and then you start to you know, upgrade your audio and upgrade your video and upgrade your ideas and start to get into a rhythm. And uh, yeah, I just kind of took off from there. I mean, my first year it took me a year to get a thousand subscribers, which in my opinion is a vanity metric nowadays anyways. Um, and then the following year, I really took a focus on focusing on the community, right? I didn't want to, I didn't need it to make necessarily money for me. That wasn't the, that's not the goal. And it's still not the goal today. Um, and when I started focusing on the community, I feel like it just took off. So we can delve into that a little bit, but to answer your, your question, that's how I got started. Cool. Yeah, it makes sense, bro. I mean, it's not cheap. No, it's not. I just did my taxes on, on the, on the business, <laughs> which is great. Everything becomes a write-off at that point, but still, yeah. I think my expenses this year were 7,000, I think, wow. seven or 8,000. No. Um, yeah, it's not a cheap, <laughs> not a cheap hobby or a cheap sport, but I definitely made, made more than that. But yeah, it's interesting. You know, now I'm thinking like into the future. I was like, okay, it's titled Wendell Fishing. I'm like, maybe my girls want to take, I'm like, YouTube hasn't been around long enough mm -hmm. for like generational transfer of channels. But mm -hmm. it's my hope someday that either my oldest, Mercy, who's eight, or my youngest, River, will be my co-host on my podcast. And then over time, as I start to phase out of my time on YouTube, because it's starting to get old, that they would take it over, right? That's my hope. Oh. That's my dream. So yeah. I would love to see Wendell Fishing go gener go generational. Yeah. So no, I just no. want to give my kids options. So that's why I kind of titled it Wendell Fishing as well. No, cool. that's that's dope, man. I've never considered that, like uh, kind of like passing it on, like people pass off a business to their children. But yeah, I mean, why not? You yeah, know, every works. every kid right now wants to be like a content creator or influencer, yeah. but it'll be so incredibly saturated and hard to do. But I'm going to be able to give my kid a step up and an advantage because their dad spent all the time getting it to this point if mm -hmm. they want to do fishing. Um, but my wife has a channel as well. She's monetized uh, Wendell Woodworks. So just more options for my kids also keeps me going. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah that's dope, man. Um so, so talking about all that stuff you you were buying. So, when you got started with with the channel, did you already have, uh, did you already have your equipment? So, so you already had your cameras no, and all that. I got nothing. No, <laughs> I started from ground zero. No, I all have right. no history in this. So, I got a GoPro Seven Black. That was my first like. Okay, I still have that. That that's my secondary camera up from my shoulder. Um, okay, and then. You know, I, my audio, you buy the cheap Yeti and I use that for a while and then upgraded to this and make my audio sound better for my podcast. You know, these small upgrades, you can get carried away with that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, buying cameras you really don't need. I mean, I'm looking at my Brio right now for my podcast. This was like a $175 webcam that you're looking at. Um, most people wouldn't be able to tell it from a lot of those few thousand dollar cameras. Now, if you like to geek out on that, go to town. But I'm just saying you can do this fairly cheap to get started and that's of course what i would recommend anyways most people crash and burn early so no yeah. yeah for sure I, the one um i'd say the one thing that holds people back from growing a youtube channel is probably that just not sticking with it long enough oh it, especially it can now get heavy yeah i mean you can spend what happens well here's the thing about fishing like editing a fishing video is tough right because you got you're out in the water for eight hours and mm -hmm. there's some ways of course you can you know you can mark all these things but um i end up just you gotta edit such so much footage you get so little amount and it just takes an incredible amount of time to do that well and so it's harder yeah and so when you do all that work and you spend especially at the beginning when you spend seven hours on a video to get 20 views yeah. dude, that's a punch in the gut and you do it again next week for 25 views, it's another punch in the gut. <laughs> and yeah. after like six months of this, you're like, wait a second, is this worth it? Uh, yeah, but those those first couple like 25 views though, when I first started, I'd be checking my video like every hour and I'd be like, oh, oh yeah. snap. I went from 16 to 17 views. I got 19 yeah. views. And you're like, bro, people want to watch me. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. What I always have to do, I have to remember this. 
because you, then you start getting like greedy. You have like 50 views and it'll yeah. be, you'll be like, I only got 50 views, but you got to think of it in this way. Imagine you had 50 people in a room yeah. listening to what you had to say. 50 people in a room. You'd, be, you'd walk out of that and be like, whoa, that was a great turnout. Mm -hmm. And so, and then, you know, and so it's, it's you got to think of it in, in terms of like how many people are listening to you and, and put them in a room. And so now I was like, when I do a video, I'm, I'll be happy. Like my goal is at least get a thousand views on it. Imagine a thousand yeah. people in a room listen to what you got to say about about fishing. I mean, I hope it's helpful, and I guess it is, or they wouldn't continue to sh continue to show up. But that's that's how I have to visualize it in order to keep my head in the game. Yeah, I look at it like that too because I just broke the cusp of uh, 500 subscribers, which was cool. Um, so you know, just these little milestones. Um, and I know the first videos, a couple of them, they're gonna bomb. And it is what it is, um, but it's it's it is about that consistency, and uh, yeah, just got to stick it out. So I'm I'm going through that that growing pain right now, as you call it. So yeah, you're in you're in the tough spot right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there is there is some juicy stuff on the other side of that if you stick with it. And I'm talking like year two, year three. Yeah. Um, most people are like, nope, don't got time for that two year three year stuff yeah, didn't no. used to be that long but it's the, the beauty of youtube and that's what i love about it jay um and one you you can be like okay if i dedicate right now if you're gonna start day one if you don't have a channel if you're listening to this you're like hey i'm thinking about a channel i haven't started it. and you're like hey if you give it 10 years i believe you can go full-time just kind of doing it on the side kind of staying consistent with it you could probably do it in less Actually, many people could, but in 10 years, like, hey, I, I, you can be a full time content creating fishing every day if you do the hustle, do the work, and do it for five to 10 years. It's exciting to think mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And that's, that's what that's one of the things I love about being uh, a content creator is years ago, the only time that you would sit there and watch all these professional bass anglers on TV and they're like, oh, I'll be, they're, they're doing this full time. Like, that's the freaking dream, right? Mm -hmm. How, I wish I could do that, but I just, you know, wasn't in a family that got me into it or I didn't get involved, blah, blah, blah. It's never going to be for me. That changed with YouTube. Yeah, right? It's tangible. Now. It's tangible for you. It's tangible for me. And that's what I get so jacked about is that I could, I could be a full-time angler because, yeah. because of YouTube and being a content creator. And that just jacks me up. And I'm on my way. That's, that's my goal. Yeah. I think it's true, though, it's, and it is all based on consistency, and it's, you see that across the board, regardless of whatever it is. You know, if it's um, you have somebody from your town that's been baking or making shirts or doing what have you, you can see that, you know, as long as they stick with it and they stay with it long enough, people see it and they they respect it. Over time, they respect that. At first, they might be like, oh, that's a little that's a little different or whatever the case may be. But over time, you know, as long as you stay consistent enough and try to put yourself out there, um, it's all going to work in your favor. You know what I mean? Then you'll start popping up here and there. And, and believe it or not, people do start recognizing you. Um, and so, yeah, you see it in the in the uh, in the dashboard analytics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's addicting, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, it is, it is, it is. I look at this thing like every hour of the day. It's yeah. fun. I have fun it with is. it, but it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. I try not to, but like I, I still do. Yeah. So I, I, I try not to get all caught up because you get a, you, you know, you can only have so many videos that are one in 10. You know what I mean? Like one of sure. 10 or whatever for your upload. So it gets in your head. But, but if you, if you dig the right way and you look at the analytics and that's, that's kind of where the gold nuggets are. Yeah. For those so of you who don't have a YouTube channel. What he's talking about is if when, every time you post a video, it'll tell you how it's performing against your last 10 videos. And so when mm -hmm. he says a one out of 10, it means it's it's performing better than the last 10. Or if you mm -hmm. did a two out of 10 or three out of 10. So that's kind of addicting as well. Yeah. yeah trying to yeah, figure out, sure. like, like watching that back, like trying to figure out, was there something in particular that I did that allowed this to spike or what have you? And yeah, try not, trying not to get caught up in that thing but at the same time trying to potentially recognize it yeah learn, so, there's something yeah. to learn there or maybe there's not and maybe just your topic it's just not a highly searched topic and it's actually a banger video it's just performing less because there's less yeah you know, the demand for it yeah yeah, yeah. and that'll happen and it, 
hit, like something will come like I've had old things come back to me like recently there's something that I posted a while back and out of nowhere it just caught fire yeah I have one right now I posted it like a year ago and it's like it went from 40,000 to over 100,000 in a matter of like a month I was like dang yeah welcome to YouTube yeah, that's why I love it it's a library yeah. yeah, man. And it's then it's, you just never know when it's going to hit. It could be the season. It could be the algorithm change. It could be five people started watching it and then it just blew from there. Yeah. I mean, I had one video I posted. It's probably like a year and a half at this point. For the yeah. first six months, I think I got maybe like six or seven hundred views. And then it just took off like a rocket ship. And I have probably close to 60 or 70 on it now. Thousand. So it just it, and it's one of my better performing long form videos now. You so just, just kind of never that. know. You just got to post and go. Post and go. Post and go. I and so think on. that's a testament to uh don't get don't get butt hurt about those views. Don't don't read into them too much and keep that stuff up there because you never know what's gonna happen with the algorithm or what's gonna happen there. And often people respect the history and the work. Yeah. And then, for sure. Uh, you know, because they look back at that, you know, and they'll they'll go back and see and they'll say, Oh, you know what? Let me see what this looked like for just for the sake of, you know, uh comparison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. see growth. You know? you know what I see all the time that drives me crazy, Juan, is people will get on like, oh, my first videos are off. Or I took them down off YouTube. You never see them. I was like, you'll see mine up there until the end of eternity. I'm proud of my first ones because every single one made me better. Right. Yep. And right. so you're going to see my first video ever made. I'm never going to take it down because I absolutely freaking love it. Um, that's the starting point. Someone's got to start somewhere. Don't be ashamed of it. I, I do. I do have a few I should uh, re uh, republish in that case. But yeah. <laughs> bring them on. It's a story. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, it is. It truly is. Yeah. So. And it's it's also as a, as us being creators, I enjoy going to other people's YouTube channels that like Think Media or whoever that might have a couple hundred thousand subscribers, and I'll go to their videos and I'll put oldest videos first. And you see their their growth is I mean you see the growth in your own videos but, yeah and something like that it's crazy yeah it's uh it's fun uh speaking of so Juan says something important which was consistency and I think that's just the number one thing like if you have a I know it's the number one thing if you have a channel yeah. whether it's you doing social media you know Instagram Facebook or you're focusing on something like TikTok or uh, or YouTube you just got to be consistent and just do it. If it's it's gonna you know if you feel burnout out if you feel like people ain't watching like that's where that's if you if you're able to push through that struggle that's where you start reaching kind of like those milestones. I think especially one, two because I think that you know the discipline aspect is very important because um, it's not easy. There's not times that I want to create this content or do things not because I don't have the heart for it or I have no desire to do it. I'm not, I don't do this for a living. I don't get money mm -hmm. from this, right? I'm not at that level yet. So for me, somebody who's aspiring to do that, I still have to juggle the family, the job, and still try to get in where I fit in, right? And so there's going to be times where I'm not going to want to uh, do what it takes to remain relevant or stay consistent, right? But it's incumbent upon me to do that if that's what I really want. You know what I'm saying? The same way it would be for that kid or whomever who's, you know, let's say they want to be a professional uh, basketball player, baseball player, it's incumbent upon them to, to practice and, and get where they have, you know, um, mm -hmm. when they don't want to, right? So, um, so yeah. Um, and that's the tough yeah. part, man. It's like going to the gym <laughs> or anything else, right? So, Like, like any other habit. That's a perfect yeah. way to put it. Yeah. So if, if you guys watch and have specific questions for about YouTube, either for myself or Juan or, or Darren or the group or whatever, make sure you guys post them. So I have questions here, but I want to make sure we get to you guys if you do have specific questions. Uh, so my next question for Darren is, what's your favorite thing about being a YouTube creator? Mm. Uh, three things. One's the community, right? The friends that I've made. Jay, you and I, uh, we were fishing in Gunnersville <laughs> like last mm -hmm. year. Um, there's a lot of people actually on on the, the comments right now that I speak to almost every day, right? I have friendships. Like I, I went down to the Columbus Expo and took some two of the guys who went with me are literally sitting in the comment section. Um, mm -hmm. So I've developed some pretty significant friendships. I only have like two really close friends here in Ohio, um, like really close friends. All my other friends are like all within the kayak fishing community. And so I was 
that's the reason I started my podcast. I didn't do it for extra views. I didn't do it for this, didn't do it for that. I just wanted to get to know people within the kayak fishing community. And so now I'm mm -hmm. friends with all the people that I used to watch their videos. And so that's a lot of fun for me. Number two, I mean, I shared the second reason, which is back in the day, only professional anglers could do this full time. YouTube's given me the ability to do what I love. And now it's actually provide an opportunity for, to provide for my family, um, which is kind of kind of fun. It's becoming that significant financially, which is awesome. But my favorite thing about being a YouTube creator is that it's significantly made me a better angler. Because if you, <laughs> yeah. if you post a YouTube video on fishing and you don't know what you're talking about, yeah. uh, everybody's going to let you know about it. Right. And so it really involves, and I've been fishing since I was like eight years old. So I had this general idea of this lore and this and this type of fishing, but um, you can't just throw that out there. Right. You get, you gotta, you gotta bring in this. You gotta do a ton of research, mm -hmm. sometimes hours, if not days or weeks of research to kind of compile all of your thoughts and to kind of put your, your flavor on it and then do the video. And because of that process, I have, I have really, elevated my game especially over the last three years um to the point where okay i'm i'm competing with i'm competing now right i can i'm i'm feel pretty confident if there's fish in that lake i'm gonna catch them um and if there's 20 or 30 kayak anglers down there i'm gonna be in you know i'll be i'll be in the upper 50 percent 20 percent and so it's brought a lot of confidence and really is um hone the craft yeah. of angling so that's what i love most about it and that's why i tell people hey even if you don't want to like i don't want to be a content i don't want to be full-time literally just the process of making a video is going to really force you to stop and mm -hmm. put in the what i feel is super underutilized put in the research time there's a lot of people if you don't do the research yeah. right if you just go out there like i i asked the question on um on my youtube community it was a it was a poll how many of you listen to podcasts? And some people are like, never, I'd rather be fishing. I was like, well, in the room, in the room for both, right? Couldn't you like learn something new on a podcast and then go try it out in fishing? Or do you just think you know it all? And you're just going to go fishing every single time. If that's what you want to do, then go do it. But I'm just saying um, there's, there's a process and there's a learning process. That if you totally skipped, you are, you are just not doing yourselves any favors if you want to grow. No. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, and 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 that's something like that. I I two things I want to agree with. One is that you I know for me, for one, I've definitely become a better angler. Um, I, I've seen myself go from not catching anything into really just like figuring out certain things that and catching fish in certain conditions that I, I'm so surprised about. Um, and I'm just thankful that's just due to a little bit of that, that grind that you're referring to, um, you know, watching a little bit of anything that I can, uh, to kind of soak up, um, whatever I, whatever it takes so I can stay relevant, so I can stay on top, so I can stay ahead. Um, it's funny. And, and the second one that I agree with is that if, if you don't know what you're talking about, uh, people gonna let you know. <laughs> and, uh, it's funny if you go. If if you go on my my shorts, it's I consistently see around here. So me, it's just me, tomato, tomato, whatever, potato, potato. I don't know. So to me, a pike and a muskie, it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> but but <laughs> I know that they're not. I know that they're not. I know that they're absolutely not. But uh, that's only because in my in our particular area we have a lot of chain picker roll. So it's highly likely you'll catch a chain picker roll over a pike or a muskie. Mm. And if you catch anything, it's probably going to be a pike. It's probably never going to be a muskie. And so um, I've just gotten used to just calling it all, calling it all that. And I'll, I'll kind of get excited in my little postings and getting stuff together for YouTube or whatever the case is. And I'll go ahead and I'll miss, I'll misgender the fish. Misgender the fish. Yo. Don't you dare. <laughs> When I tell you they be coming for me crazy. Oh. And the beauty of it is, though, y'all, y'all have to decide how y'all going to react to that. Mm. And um, you could be butthurt about it and try to act like, a, or you could just be real about it and say, hey, you know, like I do. I try to be real about it. But like, hey, 
you know, <laughs> it happens, you know. Um, there was one time I did it on purpose, you know, just to kind of uh, get people riled up. Um, but yeah, you know, it is what it is, man. People gonna let you. That's know. also that's also a good strategy, by the way, just riling people up. It is. Yeah, it is. You get it people is. mad, man, because they'll they'll drop comments. Oh yeah. Hey, sure. Information tells, emotion sells, man. If you get that's right. people all riled up. You have yeah. a train of a hundred comments that's yeah. just wild. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because unfortunately, I, I hate to say it, but the negativity sells, man. People yeah. will point out a mistake you made way, way more than they'll point out anything good you do. So, yeah. um, to potentially, you could potentially use that for your advantage, man. Like, you know, it's easier for a wise man to act like a fool. Mm. So, you can, yeah. you know. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to tell you, Jay. Mm. This is the last one. I and, and mainstream kind of brought it up. Whenever you're editing your video, like I'll catch a fish. I'll be like, oh, I know how I caught that fish. I threw out this lure and I was retrieving it this way. And then it, and it hit. Then I go watch the video of me catching that fish. That's not what happened. Right. I actually looked at my phone and it dead sticked for five seconds. And then when I picked it up, I, and then I started retrieving it and then it hit. I was like, oh, mm. I just learned something new. Right. When I'm fishing that particular lure, maybe I need to quote unquote, check my phone. Right. Let that thing fall mid whatever it is to see if that entices the bite. So um, yeah. that's another thing I do all the time. So, oh, what I thought happened didn't actually happen. That's true. Yeah. yeah you like pick up on something new from watching the videos. Yeah. That's true. You get such a me muscle memory. And since you've taught it before on the channel, you're like, oh, this is how I always do it. So that's must have been how I did it. And yeah. yeah. Lord. All right. We, we got a couple questions here. So we're going to start with some of the earlier ones. All right. So we got like seven or eight, man. So Dang. Matt Collins fishing, he says, when was your biggest breakthrough in growth and what do you contribute it to? Mm -hmm. Is that for me? Yes. I'll well, you it. go first. All right. I know the moment. It's the moment where I decided to make YouTube my part-time job. That was it. Okay. And it was just a giant, messy, I, I ended up doing, I kicked it off by doing three shorts a day for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And I think I got a million views in that part. And so I learned shorts really, really fast. Some of those took off. Some of them got over a million views. Um, and then really just like, I started creating goals for myself. Um, when I get to a thousand subs, I had a goal. When I get to 10,000 subs, I'm going to start my podcast. And then and then when I get to 20,000 subs, I'm going to create a monthly partner program. When I get to 30,000 subs, I'm going to create a merch line. Uh, when I get to 35,000, I'm going to create a kayak fishing freaks uh, Facebook page. And so I kept mm -hmm. having these goals and I treat it like a business. And when I started treating it like a business, it took off. I could show you my, my stats. They're freaking wild. Yeah. Um, before that hit or miss. You know, I might have one take off. I might not. It was, uh, I might, I might lapse for a week and a half, but now every single day, one short a day, one podcast a week, one video a week and a daily community post. And I just stay consistent with it. And so that's, that's when my growth took off and, and the, the financially, uh, with views, subscribers, all the metrics through the roof. When I looked at YouTube in that way. Okay. That's dope. I did notice that you do post one community post a week. And uh, and it's crazy the amount of, of people that you like that will interact with that post, man, because YouTube's not really known for the community posts necessarily. Uh, but the like the fans, the super fans are on there and you got some crazy reach on your posts. Yeah. I mean, I'll do I'll do a, a poll and I do one a day. I'll do a mm. poll and it, sometimes it'll get the 3000 votes. Wow. Which is like, whoa. That's that's significant. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and so this is kind of a good segue. Mainstream fishing says shorts is where it's at for growth. Let me, let so me I have you. I have Can mixed I, reviews on that. My bad. Yeah, you got something to say, Juan? I got no, no, not something to say. I got something to ask about it. Because okay. I wanted to know, uh, Wendell, did you start specifically with shorts and reels and whatnot and then go into long form, or was that like more together cohesive no i i started youtube when there wasn't shorts right i remember right when it first started on when they brought shorts to the table and then just started doing i should have done them a whole lot more um because they were sending them through the roof as far as reach is concerned yeah. i did them enough to get the juice out of them for sure 
Um, and mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, the problem is you don't want your channel to be hundred percent shorts either. Cause when you throw a, a, a longer video on there, you got everyone who's accustomed to just consuming content for 15 seconds. And when they say eight minute video, then it's going to signal, they're going to look at it for a second and signal to YouTube after they bounce off that, Hey, this video sucks and it doesn't. And so I try, I try, that's why I have a multi-channel approach. Like I just use all of the things I have a podcast that YouTube wants you to do. I do the community posts that YouTube wants you to do. I do the long form video, short form form video. Um, I do it all. So it grows organically like on all levels, not just heavy and just one. And so okay. that's kind of how it makes sense to me. I know other people do it in different ways, but so far it's been, it's been working. So you have more yeah. than one channel. No, I have one channel. I just utilize all of the tools on that one channel. So was it always uh, like one upload a week for the for your long form scenario? No, it's sometimes. I mean, that's what I do now. It's evolved into that because everyone's like, you do what? I can never do that. But I, I in such a rhythm right now, I could I can pop off a short. I can make 30 shorts in an hour. Right. If I wanted to, yeah. I can make what took me an hour to make a long form video will take me an hour and a half. What used to take me eight hours, take me an hour and a half now. And so I, I, I've i dialed in my processes and how long it takes me to do this. So I do it very quickly now that you've been doing it for three years. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm to the point around where I found found the rhythm that works with my lifestyle and my, and for you. my family. Yeah, for me. Now, um, when you, so originally, like, so when you were like sorting your thing out for you, what works for you, right? So you're, you got one community a week, one video a week, one short a day, um, and one podcast every week. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so boom, that was, that's what's worked for you when you up until that point, how many, like, what was your max? Like, what was your, and, and sorting that out and trying to figure that out. How many long form or bigger videos were you making a week or a month or what have you? Yeah, it, it changed. Sometimes it was two long form a week and maybe a couple shorts and then it wasn't no podcast at all. And so it got to the point where in my mind, I thought to myself, I'm going to out hustle every other kayak angler out there. That's why I'm, I'm doing so much. I, I'm doing two. Actually, this past week, I did two or three shorts a day, right? We're going mm -hmm. into the fishing season. It's got a lot, yeah. lot getting a lot more. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I do two long form videos. Now we're going to fishing season. Like those rules might change because I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep posting and posting and posting. Okay. I mean, there's a, it's a, I'll be honest with you. I feel like it's a hustle culture out there. We have and YouTube has 114 million active YouTube channels, 114 million, yeah. um, 2,500 videos are uploaded to YouTube every minute. Wow. Right. There's 800 million videos. On YouTube, if you think you're going to come in and get that one video, fishing video, that's just going to send you through the roof and you're going to be the overnight success, yeah. I got news for you. It's not going to happen, Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? And if you're going to think you're going to come in and do a, a video every month and do this full time in 10 years, I got news for you. It's not going to happen, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, it used to happen. It's not going to happen anymore. Yeah. No. Not with the landscape it is now, not with how many people one want to be content creators now granted the the viewership of youtube is growing as well so that's exciting so there's still room for new content creators i'm not saying that i'm just saying if you come in and you, and you want to grow and you want to grow fast i'm telling you that i have i haven't found any better way like than than what i'm what i'm doing just got to throw it out there a lot of times you just gotta get messy sometimes they pop sometimes they don't and you just gotta go for the ride yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were saying uh, your opinion on the views on the sh or not on your views, but your uh, your view on the shorts. On yeah. So I just don't I don't like doing shorts, man. For me, it's another thing to think about. And uh, and it's it's probably because I, I didn't fully switch over into that mentality there. And that you were saying, like, this is my part time job like I have. But I had a I feel so I had this career transition uh, early last year, about a year ago, actually, where I went working a full time corporate job that I had for many years because now I work for myself doing my own business, which is separate from the YouTube thing. But I feel like I had a lot more time, even though I work from home now. It's crazy. Like I had a lot more time to do all my YouTube stuff when I worked like a standard nine to five. 
Uh, <laughs> so, so it kind of like, for me, it's just like a brain block to get something going. Uh, but the reason I don't love shorts too, is because the, the people you're feeding shorts to are not the same people you're feeding the long form to. Generally, there's not a lot of crossover between the two. Um, if you watch, even on your own like viewing habits, if you watch shorts of a specific channel, chan chances are you don't watch a whole lot of their long form and vice versa. Um, so that's why I don't, I mean, I'll post shorts, but not on any sort of schedule or anything like that, which is probably why they don't pop off like, you know what I mean? Like they could, I guess. Yeah. I'm looking at my stats right now. Last 28 yep. days. And it's the difference between shorts views and video views. Video views, I got 228,000. Shorts views, I have 207,000. And so it's like a 50-50 split. And yeah. that's that's how that's kind of want to keep it there. I don't want my shorts to go to 90 in my the videos because there's a difference between a short viewer and a video viewer, right? Your For video sure. viewers are gonna be much highly, much more highly connected with you, right? Than shorts. And so, mm -hmm. but I think I, I think there's a place for both. I think yeah. shorts used to be really difficult for me to create shorts, and I've just kind of found my thing. Another thing that's interesting, um, well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Well, We'll get that in a little bit. Tease that out there, whatever that cryptic was. All right. So uh, actually, Brian, this is a good, uh, good segue real quick. Brian, the Michigan fisherman, says, is when do I have a wife and kids? My wife and kids are the one thing keep me from pulling uh, more effort into my YouTube. So I guess this is maybe like besides a yes or no question, maybe some productivity tips that you can give for how you how you crush it the way you do while having because I know you have a wife and kids. So, yeah. so how do you, how do you get it all done while still being like a family man? Yeah. So I mean, my wife and I just, we communicate, right? Um, typically I go out on Saturday mornings unless she doesn't need me to. And how I get my competitive edge is that I go out for work, right? I get mm -hmm. up at 5am and I go out to my local lakes and I'll get, I'll be back before work. And so I'll get a lot of my, my, my content before work so that is uh and then I'll, I'll stay up late and editing videos or on my lunch break i'll start editing videos or come up with creation uh, come up with ideas and and so i'm just I'll, i'm just always doing it in my free time it's just it's just my thing and so we've gotten into a rhythm because she has her own youtube channel as well and she gets it right so i help create that time for her but also in the same breath you know my wife kids and i went to gatlinburg this past week i didn't really I scheduled all my posts and really tried to stay present with my family as much as I possibly could. And so yep. it's uh it is a balance there. We've been but after doing it for three years, you kind of you kind of figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's definitely gonna be a balance because uh, I mean we have we have that too. Like we all got wife and kids. And I mean, even if you didn't want to do the YouTube thing, it's still a balance if you want to be able to do something that's not work and then immediately come home and that's your life for the next 18 years. Yeah. Yeah, I just tell my wife I'm going to work when I go out for Saturday morning. Right, it makes money yeah. now, so I'm, she You're loves that. Money. She loves hearing that. <laughs> and my wife's a saint, by the way. Just let yeah. everyone know that really what makes this happen. It's not that we just communicate. My wife's freaking awesome. So, yeah. yeah, my wife too, man. Like she's anytime, anytime that there's essentially free time, she kind of already knows that I would potentially want to fish. So she kind of already has things open in her mind. She's always kind of like, hey, so what's going on? You you plan on fishing or what? Do you, if you plan on fishing, <laughs> what I plan on doing. But if you don't plan on fishing, then we could do this. She always has like both of them kind of set up for me already, which is really, really nice um, because it, it lets me decide. And then like, so like on Good Friday, I fished, had a really good experience. Um, and so because I had a good time, caught some decent fish, I was good. I was good. Yeah. I have to try to force it. I wanted to go today a little bit, but, uh, you know, with work tomorrow and everything like that, and I didn't want to be too tired for the podcast. Last podcast, I was exhausted. <laughs> Jake came back from uh, Racetown Lake, and it was, oh, man, I was hurt. No. Yeah. Yo, and, uh, yeah, real quick note to that. So we went out to Racetown with our buddy Jake, who we were pre he was pre-fishing for a tournament they had this weekend. So weird. we were out there two weeks ago, and he actually fished that tournament. And Jake Stem, he's an old town pro. 
staff and uh he hit first place on that on that tournament this week so congrats Ooh, to jake shout out to jake dude. yeah he's a hammer bro first first tournament of the year cold water big muddy lake and he he went out there and slayed it man he took the lead by over nine i think nine inches oh that's a clinic second place yeah, yeah. wow so he was he was finding them and so and, uh, uh and he had electronic yeah. issues uh like two hours into it, so he just went. He went old school fishing, man. And no live just, scope. Yeah, no live scope, no nothing. He just straight, just set up on it, the bank and just worked it, man. And uh, yep. made it happen. Yep. So, yeah, got another question here from Anthony Laterno, and this one's actually a really good question. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? If so, how do you deal with it? Oh, like being <laughs> like uh, oh, people copying you, like. Like somebody copying you? No, no, no. So imposter syndrome, if you're not familiar with imposter syndrome, it's where you feel like you're an imposter um, in your industry or in your space. So you feel like, man, why am I doing this? There's people that know so much more than me. Uh, it's, it's like an internalized thing that you don't um, belong in your space. You know what I mean? Because other people know more. <laughs> no, no, no. See, what you got to do is you got to be real with yourself, first off. Uh, that's the biggest thing. Um, and don't get yourself caught up in any of these potential. First off, understand this. Whether you want it to be or not, or whether you want it to exist or not, there's perception. People are already perceiving you, looking at you a particular way, whether you want them to or not, based on how you look as it is. Mm -hmm. So with that given, um, you, you have two things. Either you're going to prove their perception wrong by continuing to just be yourself um or i i don't really i don't I, I, would, I wouldn't even really know what the next thing is because at the end of the day that's just it you just got to be true to yourself be true with the knowledge that you have if you're trying to get to learn a new technique bring your people along with you on that ride as you're trying to adjust and get and get used to that and and tell them you're learning and and tell them you're, you don't know you, you go to my shorts now and people uh mess with me about the musky stuff and i'll be real like hey man i'm sorry where I come from, it's just like this, and and, and you're right, and I, sh I should be doing a little more research, and and just take it, take it for what it is, because at the end of the day, uh, people mean well, man. This is one of those communities where people will school you in a good way, right? Um, so, so yeah, man. Uh, biggest thing I could say is uh, don't don't let this stuff get to your head because you're just you know no. what I mean? we're nobodies, man. We're just regular folk just trying to fish, make it happen. Okay. Um, I got two thoughts on that. One, um, I don't watch other fishing YouTube channels for the reason that I don't want to subconsciously do what they do or how they do say what they say or shoot videos like they, they shoot videos. Um, and two, kind of what you said, Juan, I don't, you could, we could all three do the same video, same title, right? And anybody, one person comes over and watches those three videos and they would hate my video and Juan's video and love Jay's video because of the vibe, right? Just yeah. your vibe and your, maybe your faith alignment, maybe just how you communicate, maybe your humor. And mm. since your vibe attracts your tribe, um, yeah. you just, you attract the, the people that just connect with how you communicate. Right. And the things that you like in the way that, oh, I write this person over on YouTube and they never write me back. When I go write Wendell Fishing, he always writes me back. Where do you think they're mm -hmm. going to gravitate to the person they have a relationship with? Yeah. And so just because you might be saying something that 15 other channels are saying, still say it because your community will never go over there to listen to it because they don't like that guy. or They don't like that girl. They think they're a tool or they curse all the time or. They just have a different worldview than I do, or, you know, I, I saw them or heard them or what, whatever it is. Yep. And so don't let that stop you for sure. Mm -hmm. Because what I, what I love about my channel is just like, I'm just trying to keep it real. And when I'm learning something right now, I'm learning about batteries, right? There's going to be a video that comes out in the batteries on, on Saturday. Probably not going to be a banger video. I don't care. I created it. Cause I'm, that's where I'm at right now in my fishing journey. Right learning mm -hmm. the ins and outs of lithium batteries which is kind of fun and how to utilize those so it's uh 
it's interesting. So that's how I view it. And so I don't really have imposter syndrome and I, I try to create those barriers. So I don't do it subconsciously. So that's, yeah. that's my, that's my two cents. <clears throat> okay. That's a uh, good feedback. I will only add as someone that has dealt with imposter syndrome in the past. And I mean, I still get a good dose of it here, here and there. Um, like Juan said, you just, my best thing is I just let it go. And even if I feel like I try. So one thing I've learned is just being alive, right. For those last 35 years is just do what you know, you have to do. Don't go based on emotions. So even if I feel like this, you know, this video, I don't have authority to speak on the topic or, you know, I don't belong in this space. I know that it's a, it's in here, but it's not the reality. So just discerning, if you're able to pick that apart from being um, what your what the, your perception is and what your reality is, you know, the reality is that I have experience in this space. I know what I'm talking about to a, a decent degree, at least. I mean, it doesn't matter what what I'm thinking about up here. I just I just need to go forward and do it. Like, and that's with anything else. You just push through uh, mentally and you get through all that stuff. You yeah. know, real quick, I'm going to add to what you were just saying. Um just bear with me as I kind of freestyle in this, kind of try to keep my thoughts uh, put together. Um, that kind of makes me think of how, um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen this video with Elon Musk, where he's like, he's getting interviewed by somebody and he's, he's being asked about the spaceship and has he, has he considered this aspect of it? And Elon's like, kind of like, hmm. And he kind of thinks for, for a second and he realizes, you know, I haven't considered that. And it was like almost the most obvious thing and it was never considered because it wasn't looked at from that particular perspective so don't think that just because you're not you don't have the title that was the camera guy who gave him that point of view that gave him that perspective that allowed him to think oh okay you know what i should consider this don't ever think that your point of view or your take on a particular item just because you're talking about something like window said to another 10 or 15 other people talked about don't think that your take or point of view on it isn't isn't considerable or isn't something that you know um somebody else can't take with them you know what i mean yeah. like mm -hmm. i said before everybody's perception is different you know what i'm saying so um you, yours is unique to you and 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 the ability to spread that and transcend that to other people is going to be unique as well so yeah and the beauty about fishing is region specific right so what someone says who lives in florida and i say something up here in ohio guess who the people north of the mason dixon lines you'll listen to right yeah. not the person down in orlando florida talking about bass fishing because it's not relevant to the area and the conditions typically they fish so it's there's so many factors involved in that yeah yeah for sure uh so next question i had here uh that i uh, someone posted something and I, I just unstarted by accident but it got me thinking about the next question here was um how do new creators stand out in 2024 when there's so many niches that are saturated they said something about oversaturation in the, in the fishing niche but how do you stand out in 2024 oh man it is i mean i can't, I can't tell you how many fishing videos quick, i see I, just i think i could get this one real quick just and like i've been saying and it's probably gonna seem like i've been drilling this now but just continue to be yourself and find a unique way to find a new thing about yourself um that you want to kind of you know everybody has that cool little part of them that sometimes they want to keep all shelled up. Um, and like, like, uh, like Wendell said earlier, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. Um, a lot of times when you, when you break into a room, your energy is what introduces yourself, right? So don't be ashamed or don't be afraid to get bold with your energy and whom, and whomever you are. And, 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 cause that's you and that's, what's going to get you going. Um, that's, what's going to make you pop. And the more you can be yourself, the more you can separate yourself, not be mm -hmm. like, but just separate yourself. So just be observant, see what's out there and see what you can do. Unlike what everybody else is doing. And also try to find the easiest and the most simplest way to do it. Um, Cause you don't have to overdo it um, in order to make it happen. In my opinion. Yeah. Thanks for that boss. I got, I got like five thoughts on this. Um, yeah, how I you can stand mind. out. No, 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 it's good. How you can stand out in 24 with so many, especially in, in, in fishing. Um, the number one thing that you have to realize as being a creator is that YouTube is 
the number two search engine in the world, owned by the number one search engine in the world, right? So mm -hmm. what do you do with the search engine? You go to Google and you are searching for an answer to a question that you have. And so to stand out, you're going to have to make videos that help people get what they want. That's, no. that's how you succeed in the YouTube game, right? Find out what questions your audience are asking and make those videos and create for yourself a deep library of evergreen content. And so whenever you get the videos out there, these are why videos typically, I know there's some channels that have excelled in this, but for the most part, typically people don't like watching other people fish on YouTube. Those are my worst performing videos. I guess I'll speak from experience. Keep in mind, I know there's some channels out there. That's what they do. Uh, but nonetheless, they, they don't do that because no one's like, how do I watch someone else fish on YouTube? Right. They can, they can go. That's not what they're looking for. They're like, how do I fish the mag draft? How do I fish yeah. the mag draft in muddy water in spring? Right. That's, those are the questions you have to start asking because those are the videos that typically will pop. So if you're just trying to create trending videos, perfect example of this is when that walleye scandal happened, right? I saw some channels blow up and sort of like two months. Cause all they covered was like cheaters, cheaters and fishing, mm -hmm. cheaters and walleye cheaters. And then when you ran out of all the cheaters we've ever caught in the world, they're out of content and they had nothing left. And then when they posted something else, that's not what people signed up for. Yeah. And so just keep in mind who you're creating content for and typically how they're finding you is through asking a question. Um, so that's how you're going to stand out in 2024. A couple other okay. things different is better than better. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Just try to add a different flavor, a different angle to the content you're creating. It doesn't have to be necessarily even better content, right? It's just got to be different content. Um, mm -hmm. I would say don't watch other fishing YouTube channels. That's helped me a whole lot, not just kind of do what others have done. Uh, two other things, create videos that are optimized for watch time, right? So keep that in mind in your editing. Um, YouTube and, and subscribers and all that stuff, in my opinion, is like a vanity metric nowadays because YouTube knows <laughs> who likes your channel and who doesn't by how long their eyeballs are watching it. And so do your best to optimize that video for watch time. So don't drone on and on. Make sure you're, you're brief, bright, to the point, quick. Uh, make really great points. Move it along because people are going to pop off if you don't. Yeah. And then your title, your, your title and thumbnail game need to be on point. Right? I think those are, those are huge. I see a lot of content videos coming out and their, and their thumbnails suck. That might have the mm -hmm. best video behind that that thumbnail in in the universe of YouTube, but no one's ever going to listen to it or watch it because the thumbnail blows and the title is awful. So if you're going to start anywhere and you're like, hey, how do I how do I get the, that competitive advantage? Do a lot of research on your title <clears throat> and spend just as much time on your thumbnail than you do actually creating your video and you'll you'll move the needle. No. Yeah. I 100% agree, man. I agree, too, because that's something that I'm going to start, like, um, transitioning into with my long-form videos. It's kind of giving more of just information, any kind of information I can that's fishing-related that I've learned that I feel I could, you know, provide a sense of confidence or I could provide confidently. Um, so, yeah, just because, like you guys are saying, man, People are coming, not, not too many channels can accomplish the deficient stuff. Even some of the channels that I used to watch, um, where I was just watching guys fish, I don't really, not really doing too much of that. I'm kind of like doing like this like weird mix of education. And if I really like the person, I watch their, their long reform stuff. But other than that, yeah. I mean, I'm always trying to get schooled on something new. So. And that's what what you I, say? What Caro say just now? What Caro say? Can we please close we, mouths we, on something? <laughs> Literally, the thumbnail I put for this podcast is me with my mouth open with the yeah. fish in my mouth. <laughs> she called me out. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's, oh, you see all the thumbnails, and it's just like the guys, like, oh yeah, or you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, all over. Information tells, emotion sells. Whether you like it or not, it works. Or people would stop doing it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Kathy thumbnail. I mean, you hit the nail on the head with the with the thumbnail and the title. I mean, those two go hand in hand. 
and then it has to be the content so they don't switch off. You know, but I I 100% agree, Darren, with with staying away from fi- like it's hard because it's like fishing videos, right? We get in because we want to fish. Yeah. But ultimately, people are not searching for somebody fishing that they don't know. So you got to put out information. You got to put out good videos that people are searching for that offer a solution to a problem, right? Just like any business. But once and then once you have an audience, then they care about you fishing. Sure. You know, like I, I haven't I had one video blow do better on my fishing videos. And that was the one that I did um, for the tournament, the championship in uh, Alabama last year. And that yeah. maybe I think has five or six thousand views. But that's like that's the biggest, the highest one I have that I do fishing on, yeah. you know, uh, view wise. Like people just don't go on. They'll go on to see Greg Blanchard, Christine Fisher, because they already have established audiences. Yeah. You know, once you have the established audience, then people will be more inclined to watch you fish. But besides that, they're not necessarily trying to see that unless. So the only caveat I'll give to that is um, is if you fish in a really popular lake that gets a lot of hits. So Brian from the Michigan Fisherman (laughs) and Lucas from the Outdoor Conquest, they both fish Lake Sinclair and they and they know how to hit it on the title so that because people search Lake Sinclair all the time for specific seasons, specific fish. You know, and, and something like that, but I would say that's not generally the case. Yeah, and to your point, when you watch Christine Fisher, or Greg Greg Blanchard, you're watching those videos. You're coming in preloaded, right? Because you learned all these things that they taught you already, and now you're actually seeing them and how it plays out. And so mm-hmm. I can see since they come in preloaded with all this pre information that you've already taught them on, they're more likely to watch than how you do it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, he's doing exactly what he talked about 16 videos ago when he's when he fishes the mag draft and boom, he just, you know, ripped the lips on the big one. So um, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Um, all right. So that, that was that was some good some good info on there. So um, so we're going to wrap it up in a little bit here not not quite yet but uh before we get to the funny or crummy segment there's a couple good questions too so so given all that information right so how you stand out if you were to start right now 2024 what do you wish you knew then that you know now when you started youtube that would have maybe done a like either fast tracked your growth or or done it in a different way yeah it all depends on what you want out of it um, so I'm going to speak from, I'm assuming you want to start a YouTube channel because you want to monetize it and be fun to pay off your, your addiction. And maybe someday, right. If you really have the grind in you yeah. do it full time. That's who I'm speaking to right now. Um, first thing I would say measured expectations, right? My first, my first year was took me a year to get to a thousand subscribers. Um, the next year popped off more. And then, like I said earlier, whenever I turned it into kind of a part-time job, that's when it, I've been on up and to the right ever since. Um, and so having those measured expectations, do some research. It's kind of fun. I did this video early on. It didn't go do well at all. But the information, to, I, I kind of created it for me. Because I was doing some research. I was like, how many videos on average does it take for someone to get 1,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers, a million subscribers? And that's a sombering, when you find that article, and you will if you search that, that's a sombering amount of videos. Can you start doing the backwards math of how many hours it takes you to create a video and how many videos you actually have to put up? Um, you very quickly realize on average, it's going to take you a lifetime, <laughs> right? To get to some of those macro goals of a million subs or or whatever it is that you need so measured expectations out of the gate so you don't crash and burn is going to be really good for your mindset um i would do research on a podcast how long guess how long the average podcast lasts um no clue less than ten seven episodes. E- seven episodes <laughs> so when you make it to eight jay i'm, I'm gonna give you a call man. congrats brother you, uh, you were above i'm halfway here. through after this one yeah right um second thing I wish I knew to be patient with yourself, right? It's it's really hard to see like, oh, that's a that's a banger title. How do I create that? Oh, that's a that's a sick um, thumbnail. How'd they get that created? Well, they might have got it created through a professional designer, right? I, mm-hmm. I sometimes get mine done on Fiverr. Um, that title 
titling YouTube videos, it takes quite a bit of time to put your brain in that mindset to create those. It just doesn't come to people naturally. And so be patient with where you are in that particular journey. Um, because in three years now, you're going to be like, oh, those first videos sucked. And you were just doing your best, learning as you went. Um, mm -hmm. Third thing I would say is pace yourself. Right? A lot of content creators don't make it that long because they crash and burn because they're too hot out of the gate. Um, so I, I shared earlier how I like to set milestone go goals. So set some goals for yourself. Find out what the realistic expectation or realistic timeline would be for those goals so you don't burn. You just realize this is average and par for course. I'm actually maybe a little bit above average. And so mm -hmm. celebrate celebrate the small wins there. And so that's those are some things I... I, it, another big thing I just thought of as well, this is my last one for this question, is you got to have fun yeah. during the process because content creation can be so encompassing yeah. like, and take all your time and effort that you never actually stop and have fun, yes. right? Yes. With people, with fishing, it's always about, hey, what's the next? What's the next? What's the next? Yeah. And then you... You lost the whole reason you're out there. Yep. And if you if you do content creation at the expense of fishing, you did it wrong. No, you know, can I, I want to add to that. So like perfect example, this past Friday would have been great content. But I wasn't up for it. Mm. I just I wasn't I just wanted to fish. I just wanted to get some time out to myself. Not everything has to be about content. Right. I buy I brought um I don't want to say how much, but I brought a, an extensive amount of stuff and I, I, I ain't post none of it, you know, you know, kind of keeping certain things to yourself for the sake of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's good too. In this aspect of things, man, like um, when you're ready for it and you have everything charged and you feel good and everything's aligned, go make your content, but don't, don't try to fit a square into a circle because you're just going to make everything kind of like ugh, for yourself. And then that's going to come out in your vibe and it's not going to, it's not just not going to be right. You know, me and Jay went on a trip together and it's not that I didn't have my stuff together. I had it together. It's just, I needed that trip to kind of get my mind right so that I could be where I need to be on a day-to-day -day basis. So I didn't do much content shooting on that trip. Yeah. Just focused on enjoying myself a little bit. And, and the other guys were able to do whatever they did and, and Jay got some more content out of it. And and um, I, I would have loved to take the opportunity to do that. But at times I just, I take it for what it is. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I said, man, not everything has to be content. Just go out there and enjoy yourself too. And and take those times out for yourself as well. And like Wendell was saying, like he had, he had scheduled some stuff and got that situated so that during this time he could, you know, spend some time with the family and stuff like that. So, so, and, and, and lastly, definitely manage those expectations, man, kind of go into everything expecting nothing to happen. Mm. It's kind of what I do is it's stupid. It's like the target, uh, logo, uh, uh, slogan, expect, uh, expect not expect less pay, wait, expect more pay less, but I expect nothing and get more when anything happens. Mm -hmm. So I just do it for the love of what I like to do. Um, and as I just try to make sure the love's in it. If, if, if a little bit of that love ain't in it, you know what I mean? Then then my vibe's not in it. Then my self's not in it. And I don't, you know, and I notice whenever that's right, it turns out right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's all I got for that. So this is, this is it because you got different... We're different mm -hmm. content creators, right? So Juan's like, hey, when I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. I'm, read I'm reading Rick Sitz. It's like, I'm doing good just to have time to fish, right? Adding content creation, video editing, and such, we're doing the fun into work. Um, and you got me, I'm over here being like, oh, the work is fun, right? Because I right now I'm in a season of grind, and I, I'm just having I'm having a blast doing the fishing and the content creation and editing. Um, and so everyone, different, different folks, different strokes. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Just knowing what yours is, is key, right? Don't try to get into it because you feel like you, you have to, and then you end up hating them both. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where it comes into where you got to be yourself. Because if you try to be someone else, I can't make videos like Darren can make videos and I won't make videos like Juan makes videos because we're just, we're, we're like Darren said, we're different people and our personalities are going to be different. What we like is going to be different. 
you know, maybe you do just want to do straight up fishing videos and you don't want to do, you know, look at my insane kayak setup or whatever. Like, that's cool. But uh, with those managed expectations, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be different for everybody. We can't be trying to be like the next guy. Yeah. They already uh, have a next KT. guy. What's that? There's already a next guy out there. Yeah, I guess yeah. there is. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Casey Kayak Fishing asks, is there anything you guys don't enjoy about being fishing content creators slash YouTubers? Yeah. Probably <laughs> just uh, the, uh, two things. Having to edit um, sometimes. And then uh, being self-conscious when other people are out and you have to kind of do something and you know somebody's in earshot. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Early on, when I was doing content, I would say this is interesting. It's this is interesting for me because I don't deal with this anymore. I used to, but once I hit like 30 k, people stopped doing this for whatever. I don't know why. But I got a lot of trolls early on. Just people, just like thirty thousand subs. Yeah, a um, lot of them. I mean, for whatever reason, they feel like they can pick on you or whatever. Or what? It was, maybe it was the videos, and they're just get. Usually, when your video, you know, pops off and goes wild, you start getting a lot of people because you're you're getting served up to new audiences, so you get a lot more, a lot more feedback. Not a, not a lot of it is, um, not a lot of it is positive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, I developed early on a rule, which is don't feed the trolls. And so, if you could, if you can somehow within your <laughs> <laughs> everything that you are yeah. not write that person back um and i just got to the point where i was like oh you obviously aren't right for this community so i'm just gonna ban you um because mm-hmm. there's no need to come in that hot because my community don't want that that's not the community i wanted to create and i don't need that in my life and so i just get it i i delete the comment and i ban you it's like that was fun all that time and effort you took to write it that that zinger of uh whatever it is you decided to say yeah. i just deleted it wasted all your time and banned you so now i believe how youtube is set up they don't know they're banned so they just keep on writing they can keep writing on your youtube channel and no one sees it except for them oh, so wild. it is wild thank you youtube it's kind of fun that's cool that's that was funny uh outdoor conquest lucas yo shout out to him he dropped the super chat here 499 thank you bro he said he's for my easter basket so appreciate you bro he says uh Trolls are a must for growth. If you're not getting trolls, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, that's to the I point of agree. you get served to new new audiences. Yeah, you're gonna get people who don't even fish, right? You're gonna get your stuff. Yeah, you're gonna have people like I, I have this one video where the person they caught a bunch of fish on an A rig, and it was more than it was like five fish at one time. They're like poachers. I'm just like, <laughs> dude, relax. I'm down. So, you know, you look at their profile and they're holding a bunch of cats and stuff, and you realize, okay. They, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. No harm, no foul. You know, you can't, you can't, like you said, don't feed into it. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Uh, let's see. I had another quick question here. Top shelf fishing. A couple of people asked this too. What's your go-to editing software, Darren? Oh, iMovie. It is so, iMovie. so easy, so fast. And here's, here's the thing. Like, we're not in tech. We don't have to have these aggressive edits that are, super visually appealing that's not what youtube fishermen are expecting and so the bar isn't super high when it comes to editing i mean you can go that route and you probably have success with it but that's not like where the bar is and so mm-hmm. i just do a real basic iMovie and i've had i've had luck with it i don't it just this just makes it really simple i can i can bang out a video and edit a video in probably an hour an eight eight minute video yeah okay I could do – it all depends what kind of video it is for me. If I'm doing a uh, like a countdown video like where I'm showing off my accessories or something like that, that's easy. You don't need any minimal B-roll. But if I'm doing – like I've noticed I do specific countdown videos, like listicles they're called for kayaks. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm finding all the B-roll to plug in and mm-hmm. making sure that the B-roll matches what I'm saying in the A-roll. Like those videos can – they take me like a good eight or nine hours to edit. Dang. Yeah, bro. And it's, you know, because if I'm doing like, like I did a video last year, it was 10 kayaks under a thousand bucks. So I'm talking maybe for a minute and a half to two minutes for each of these kayaks. 
I got to download maybe I got to find four, maybe three or four videos to use for B roll so I can plug it in when I'm talking about it. And uh, that's where it, it take, gets time consuming between finding the videos because I'll find other YouTube videos and credit them or whatever um, and then editing it. Yeah. Uh, but generally speaking, most of my videos probably do take in that four to six hour range for editing. Just just for editing. Do you use, what do you use for your editing software? I use Premiere Pro. There you go. And that's because I use a, I use their suite for other stuff. So it might not make sense for, for everybody, but I use the, a lot of their illustrator stuff. So and I come from an, a video background. Like I went to school for it. I worked in the news for a while where I was doing editing. So it's kind of like is uh, right alongside what I went to school for. Um, yeah, but yeah. it's cool they use iMovie. DaVinci Resolve is another one that I hear lots of awesome things about. I use uh, I use Adobe Premiere too. Um, me, unfortunately, like I have I have like very limited time, so like sometimes it'll take me a few days to edit something because I'll only have maybe two hours, one hour uh, to dedicate to that in any particular day. Um, and you know, kind of mentally distracted because you know maybe I'm listening out for the kids or what have you yet, because I still have little ones in the house. So, um, so yeah, so you know, those are I think goes I think that goes along with those managed expectations, right? If mm -hmm. you know that you want to have a particular schedule, a release schedule, right? Um, be be on the early side and be anticipant of that, and um, get your stuff together so you're not you know trying to cram you know, all this time in and making yourself stressed out uh, because you're like, oh, I'm not dropping within this time frame or whatever, or, or I'm like, you know, or, you know, making a bad video yeah. because, you know, you're not prepping enough time. So, yeah, I will say if you're just doing shorts, I just, and I'm probably late to the party, but CapCut is really dope for editing shorts. Like they got a lot of transitions you can plug in that are not on Instagram or whatever else. And you can download it without a watermark. They do have like a pro subscription or whatever that's a lot it's maybe five bucks a month so it's not crazy it's a lot cheaper than some of these other ones but i mean it's worth looking into for shorts that i hate <laughs> but uh yeah no that's dope man anything uh else you want to add juan or, or darren before we jump on to the next thing here oh good there okay okay so quick question and feel free to say no that you're not comfortable with this when you the first year you monetize the first full year of monetization how uh how much money did you did you bring in through through youtube or like approximately so so maybe just as a little incentive for people to know that yo there's you can actually make some money behind this you yeah. know with with doing like a decent channel oh he's gonna do the math no, I'm not doing a math. I, got, I, I have this written upstairs. It keeps me motivated. Okay. I have on like a whiteboard. Uh, my wife has a channel too. This, these are going to be kind of combined numbers. Uh, it's a smaller channel. She's like 8,000 subs. But the first year I got monetized, I think I made, it was like $1,500. It was, okay. it was, it was crazy. The second year, which have been two years ago, um, I think I hit 10K. Dope. And then this past year, between our two channels, it was twenty five thousand. There you go. And so the compound on it is was pretty significant. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, you start doing your math. Oh crap, five six years. And this is just affiliate. This isn't just YouTube. Sorry, I I'm putting it all together. My affiliate mm -hmm. marketing that we both I believe we use Genius Link for, and then ad revenue. That's where I get these numbers. Um, and so, okay. yeah, it's uh, exponential growth year over year for sure. Yeah. So you're saying this is like your Amazon affiliate and your YouTube AdSense. Yep. Just those two combined. Okay. That's dope. So my first year I did. So last year was actually my first year monetized because I got monetized at the end of December 2022. Okay. So last year between my affiliates and uh, and YouTube was around 70, like 7,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. um which surprised me because i thought it was actually going to be less than that but uh the growth is it, it, it's exponential and it same thing with like a subscriber base so you were saying it took you a year to get to a thousand it took me a little bit over a year to get to a thousand but it took me another year to get to ten thousand you know yeah. what i mean it didn't take a year to get to two thousand 
So and that's no. the way it is with the income. Yeah, it pops off. That's for sure. And uh, yeah. I I probably had under 50,000 total views uh, starting off this particular year. And I looked at things uh, from a business aspect um, this year a little bit differently. And I decided to separate things per quarter. So um, I came up with a strategy for the beginning of the year, something that I could grow accustomed to and kind of grow comfortable with and gauge my progress and see where that would take me. And that's gotten me from under like 50,000 views up to over 300,000 now and over 500 subscribers when I had maybe like 70 subscribers when I started doing this. Right. So um, that's in my first three months of the year, 2024, when I decided to come into 2024 strong. So not to say that I expect, but I do anticipate by mid year that I should have God willing, a thousand subscribers based on the traction that I've already created for myself, mm -hmm. right? Like these guys are saying, it's only going to get better, right? So if I only continue to get more consistent and I only continue to try to um, be a little more creative and a little more unique, they could only yield better options, I could assume. Um, that's what I've been seeing. It's It's been a slow and steady climb. So, um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Word. Yeah, so that's um. Thanks for sharing that, by the way, Darren. I know some people. No, it's it's it's, it's fun because I think I'm on track for 40k this year, and so yeah. this is this is what people know. If you put in the time, there is. Yeah, and know, there's there's a lot that you more. can we can talk about this because there's so many ways to make money as and I mean you're an influencer, bro. I know you hate it. We're influencers, content creator, content creator, influencers. We ah, but there's so many ways. <laughs> There's so many ways to make money on this, whether it's through affiliate programs. Like, um, I don't. So my biggest ones that pay me are my affiliate programs are not through Amazon. You know, I make more money on them. But there, you can affiliate with a lot of them. You can do sponsorships. You can obviously AdSense. Um, you know, I've done a couple paid sponsorships where companies have paid me to just throw a couple ads out there on YouTube that have worked out well. So there's a lot of ways to. Uh, oh, what do they say, skin a cat? When it comes yeah. to this. I'm getting a good night buddy message here from my little man. It's good. Oh heck yeah. There you go, bro. Do it. <laughs> um, but there's there's a ton of ways to do it, man. So that's that's what I love about it. And it's surprising to see that people want to watch it, man. I mean, I, it was surprising for me that like, yo, like these these people, these fans, not fans, these viewers started like watching and and coming through on a regular and they like to see what we put out there you know and we have and for the most part the kayak fishing community is pretty tight-knit man so like yeah. like a lot of our viewers will overlap and yeah. uh and they'll know you and they'll know chad and they'll know hoover and or um fluke master and me and you know what i mean like it just it goes on i do just want to say uh wendell man it's been a pleasure meeting you as well um just kind of you know and, and jay thank you because um you know, you've kind of been able to bring me along with your success, and I'm super thankful for that and kind of giving me a platform as well. So it, it allows me to, you know, have these kind of great opportunities where otherwise I wouldn't have it, right? Um, and allows me to be present within the community and uh, slowly but surely, you know, uh, make my footprint. And so I'm just super thankful uh, to have to have had you on today and just uh, to connect with you like this, man. Yeah, no, for sure, man. Absolutely. So, all right. So since we got nothing else to add, I think we kind of said it. What we're going to say, we're going to do the the dad jokes. So we're going to do the funny or crummy. Is that cool with you guys? Okay. Oh, yeah, let's do it. All right, man. So I love dad jokes. All my videos open with some sort of terrible dad joke. And like I said in the intro, like dad jokes, if they're bad, they're good. So I, I love it. Like you can't go wrong with these things. If it makes my 11 year old roll her eyes. I know that I've made it. The good one. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So so this is funny or crummy. We're going to decide if it's funny or crummy, right? So first one, we got Ray Johnson. Why do fish like worms? They are hooked on them. Boo. All right. Boo. Oh, one. wow. He's actually going to boo them. <laughs> <laughs> boo. Is, see, the thing is, the boo is a compliment because it's so there bad. Go. It's good because it's, it's like classic dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. All right, Roberto says, "What's a fisherman's favorite story?" 
Fishtails. Fishtails. All right. I'll do it again. Uh, Matt Collins, I got, one too. I got one too, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come all right. in. All right, we'll do, it. we'll do it right after right. this one. Matt Collins, how do you know if you're drowning in milk if it's past your eyes? Oh, that's a good one. That's solid. You know what's funny because I didn't I didn't get it now. I, I read it early and I was like, oh, that's a stupid one. That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Well done. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple you, you got to like read them this or you got to like see them and you know what I mean like a second time and then you're like, oh, oh. Yeah, those. Um, all right, let's let's see if uh Michael Bradley, if two vegetarians get in a fight, is it still a beef? <laughs> I like that one. There we go. Carol Ferg, what do you call a pudgy psychic? A fortune teller. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just had the visual. You got me, Carol. Good one. That's a good one. All right, last last one here. Carol Ferg again. This one's good. I ate a kid's meal at McDonald's today. His mom got mad at me. <laughs> i got one for you you ready all right what's yours this is the one i always tell my kids um what's the seals favorite class at school art 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 Uh, that's a good one man yeah. oh i'm gonna i'm gonna bring that up to my kid man that's funny there yeah. you go they, they it's a good one for kids to do because they're like arr, 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 arr. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you laugh yeah uh, that's sorry. funny yeah my my kid was actually my she's 11 now so she doesn't give me as many dad jokes but she was the my main dad joke supplier she was my plug so she would come uh. from school and like tell me these jokes and i would laugh and my wife would roll her eyes <laughs> you know, but now that she's going to be a preteen, she's too cool for that. Well, you get the roll of the eyes. You know, it's really good. Yeah. Right. Yep. I yep. like it. Yep. Late yeah. Late night okay, we... different with the dad crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So someone has a, another question. I want to bring it up. What was Wendell teasing to talk about earlier? What was the context of that? I forget now. I don't know. But I remember you teasing something. You were like, oh, I we'll do, do too. It I just forget what it was about. <laughs> Yeah, if I said we were going to talk about it later, we might have already talked what about it. What didn't you want to get into just yet? Uh, I know, because we talked know. about shorts. We talked about monetization, because those are two things we held off on. The sports, what was your first question? I think it was a little bit after your first or second question. What were your first or second question? Favorite what thing was the about favorite thing about being a YouTube creator? That was the first question. And the biggest obstacles was the second question. And I don't remember either one. No. Hmm. You know, something, right, so, we didn't, something we didn't talk about, and I know yeah. we're coming to the end of our time here, but like all this growth isn't just like us sitting behind a computer trying to do it on our own. Like I use so many different, um, I don't know what you call them, apps, add-ons that really help accelerate, right? Really, you're trying to reproduce and try to get your time back. And so mm -hmm. I use a ton of these. And so if you're wondering like, oh, how does... How do I do the one post, one community post, one video, one podcast, right? I have essentially robots and working for me as well. <laughs> and so you got to really take advantage of the technology that's out there. Hmm. So what was, uh, so that was, that was one of my last questions. So what was your favorite resources then to help you become a better content creator? Yeah, I won't, I won't dive in on all of them, but mm -hmm. I use chat GPT. Right, Fiverr, okay. Google. I'll use YouTube as their, their search algorithms. Right, you start typing in a question, they'll fill it in for you, and they fill it in for you for you. That's giving you the signal. There's a lot of people out there asking that question. There's your there's your uh, you know video idea. You should never run out of video ideas. That's, uh, yeah, use, that's the juice right there. It is. That's the juice. A lot of people don't even think about it. Juice. That's um, the juice. The vid, vid IQ I use for a lot of kind of my back end analytics. What I is use that? So it is an add on to YouTube that allows you here. You got it. Can I share my screen? I'll just kind of show people what it is. Yeah, I might be able to. All right. Yeah. Should give Let's, you an option there. I think, see if I, I think I'm present if you press present. Yeah, we'll get over here. Let me see here. I don't know which one it's going to put up here. Here we go. 
All right. So this is looking at the back end analytics to my platform. But if you start getting to vidIQ, I don't have vidIQ on this. My bad. Okay. I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> so vid I, I forgot vidIQ is on a different computer. This is my, this is a work computer. But what vidIQ does is essentially will, it gives you AI ideas. It gets you tag ideas. It's like, it, it'll tell you, just give you a lot more data, right? Mm -hmm. It helps you make decisions. Uh, it's like, I don't know how much it is a month, but you get a free trial. So go over to vidIQ and add it for a free trial and just see if you like it. If you don't, you have to pay for it. But I like it just because I love data. Um, so I use that. I also have um, Genius Link. It's a way to kind of manage all of your affiliate links. And so you don't have to creep on, keep on creating new affiliate links. You just kind of have them all organized in one place, which is really nice. I use StreamYard for my streaming, which is what we're on right now. Mm -hmm. I just use it for mine as well. Um, I use Opus Pro, which is the robots that kind of edit my podcasts. And I use InShot, which is kind of like a cap cut alternative. Um, so I use a lot of different things to help me help me create. Okay. Yeah, and that's uh I there's specific ones I use too. I used TubeBuddy, not BitIQ. Same um, thing. Yep. Same, yeah, same idea. As far as I use a lot of uh to be a better content creator, I listen to a lot of podcasts. There so you. those resources you mentioned are key. On the other side of it being more like almost like educating yourself on the current trends, what other people are doing, what's working, what's not working. A lot of podcasts, whether Think Media is a probably the primary resource that got me to where I am now. You could uh, Think Media has a channel on YouTube. They also have the Think Media podcast. Recently, oh. I've been listening to a lot from a gentleman named Dusty Porter, who has a podcast called the Creators Hub podcast. And all he does is interview um, content creators and influencers in other space spaces. Mm. Um, so those like a lot of there's a lot of podcasts that hit the nail on the head with that. Primal Video is another one. Pen, yeah. Ben Johnson, Creative, a lot of good ones. Yeah, Think Media. Sean Cannell's freaking sweet. Yeah, bro. My guy. That's how I learned how to do my YouTube game. So I used to travel on the road a lot for work, and I just would just. I'd save all the videos I want to listen to, and I'd just listen to them over and over again. I was like, wow, I feel like I've just next level because it changes so much. And it's their job to keep on track of all those YouTube trends, and then mm -hmm. they give it to you in, like in eight minutes. You're like, dang, so glad I learned that. Yeah, thank you. So lots of good resources out there for sure. Yeah. Have to get with that for sure. This yeah. is, and I got a couple of questions here. Okay. Um, I see one from USA Kayak Fishing, which yeah. by the way is going to be on my show on Tuesday. Oh, uh, says, do I edit my own videos <clears throat> for the most part? Yes. Um, I edit mine all my long form. I edit. I don't pay someone to hire an editor is actually more expensive than you think it would be. I get people literally writing me. You, you might be like this too, Jay. People write me all, every day. I want to edit your shorts. I want to edit your long form content into shorts. And I always ask them just for fun, like how much for a short? And they're like $35 a short. I was like, you <laughs> got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm not independently wealthy over here. Yeah. So I ended up editing all my, all my own. Sometimes I'll utilize Opus Pro on my podcast, but I don't think they do a good job because you got to know fishing in order to mm -hmm. pull the right content out to actually make that short do well in a robot. They're just not that good yet. No. Yeah. That's okay. True. So, so where can, uh, you mentioned your show for sure. Where can people find you if they're not already connected with you? Yeah. If anything on the platforms at Wendell fishing. Um, okay. but I also have a Facebook group as well. Kind of like yours called kayak fishing freaks. So yep. if you see that and the admin on that, and then the podcast is kayak fishing obsessed. Um, so every Tuesday night, 8 30 PM Eastern. I do a weekly show unless I'm out with a fam and I, it's just more of like an interview type of show. Um, I don't try to be an expert in everything. So I try to bring, try to find those individuals who are like dialed in on a particular, they, they have a unique, like maybe they work at a kayak store that sells hundreds of kayaks a day. That's the person yep. I want to get in talking about kayaks. Right. And so I, I, that's how I try to do the interview style. So it's kind of, kind of fun. Yeah. For sure, man. And I'm, I'm not going to lie, like you're so like Quan said, bro, super appreciate you being on here. You know, I, I got I got a front row seat to see a lot of your growth because I was 
I was looking at your channel when I was, you know, two or three hundred subscribers, which is nothing really. Like I was looking at, I was, I was finding other content creators in the space and I was seeing you, man. I was seeing, I found you when you had 2000 subscribers and I feel like within a, maybe a couple months, bro, it just seemed like you blew up and you were like at 12 and then 14, 20, you know what I mean? So, so getting, getting to see how well you did things and how you, you, uh, you know I mean, you did, you did well by, uh, what, what you put out um, was cool to watch. So I, I definitely appreciate you uh, for putting out good content and for linking up with me last year. I mean, you invited me onto your podcast um, and that was a good time. So after that, we kind of clicked and, you know what I mean? So definitely appreciate everything that you do for the space, man. I oh, appreciate that. I really sure. do. Thank you for saying that. Absolutely, man. So thanks everyone for watching thanks darren for coming juan for coming for sure make sure you guys uh put it on your calendars april 14th is going to be the next uh, episode of the yak chat we're talking to impulse rods oh juicy the right rods yes and, uh, solid and rods absolutely man darren knows lots about them because he works with them too um so i'm excited to have brian come on and make sure if you don't already follow uh darren on his channels at wendell fishing on youtube instagram facebook uh, join the Facebook group too, Kayak Fishing Freaks. Uh, same thing with Juan, man. Find find Juan on Instagram, Facebook. All the links are in the show notes and in description for sure. So, again, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on the show, boys. Till next time. Appreciate Peace. it. Have a good Easter. Peace. Happy Easter, y'all.